The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. Close your eyes and pull like down. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and you're all very welcome along to another episode of the Star Sport Podcast. I'm your host Matthew Hurley and I'm joined today by Star Sports reporter Sean Holland. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you in association with our friends at Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, where your bank really does matter. Choose Credit Union, choose local, choose community. Now, now later on in the show, we will, we will be joined by our Dermot O'Mahoney's captain, Jeremiah Hurley, after the Castletown Kinnock Club won their first Carberry Junior A Hurling Championship title since 2010 after a replay victory over Banla Scarty last Sunday. But first, we will look at some stories that take the headlines this week in West Cork and beyond. I uh, suppose, Sean, it's weird not starting with a game with the amount of games that happened over the last uh, few weeks, but a big story broke in relation to the Cork footballers this week. John O'Rourke from Carberry Rangers and Killian O'Hanlon from Kilshannock both announced their inter- inter-county retirements this week with St Finbar's Stephen Sherlock and Kil Maccabee's Damien Gore taking a year out from the panel. So that's four losses to the Cork panel added to the fact that Kevin Vlahoev is uh, away for a year as well. So that's five as of now um, away from the Cork panel. But first of all, Sean, John O'Rourke from Carberry Rangers retiring obviously has had a lengthy spell with the Cork senior footballers. Um, was introduced into the senior panel in 2013. Plenty of years underage as well, reached a minor All Ireland final in 2010 as well. A brilliant um, servant to Cork football, brilliant servant to Carberry Rangers as well. And John was an overall great footballer, great for the West Cork community too. He was indeed, Matt. And uh, as you put it there, servant is probably the, the best uh, way of putting it in terms of uh, John has been soldiering with Cork now. Uh, close on 12 years so um, he probably feels um, it's time now to to step away and um, you know maybe uh, he, he put as he put it himself is probably down to um, game time and you know there's um, so many modes to feed there inside in the Cork squad you know and um, for the amount of effort you're putting in I know John last year only got two brief substitute uh, appearances there in the championship uh, against Limerick and Clare and you know, you know yourself from the the amount of hours that these lads are putting in, uh, week in, week out, ten or eleven months in in the year, um, to be getting a couple of minor appearances. Do you know is it is it is it worth it then? Do you know when you're coming into your um, do you know mid thirties and um, do you know John John has played at the highest level there and probably feeling is the best time to step away uh, now. But um, what will be Cork's loss will definitely be Carberry Rangers gain as well in that match. Um. He's had a fantastic uh, 2024 championship campaign, really pulled Ross along and, um, uh, you know, was a big reason there as well in the relegation decider, you know, to keep them at the top level of Cork football. But, um, you know, John even said himself um, in, in this week's paper that yeah, he'd have loved to have won something so substantial with, um, with Cork, you know, be it um, a, a National League or maybe a Munster Championship, uh, but it wasn't to be. He also... Um, was unlucky to miss out there in 2010 in that minor uh, All Ireland final as well. So um, you know he, he's been a great servant to Cork, uh, as you said. Uh, but now he feels the right time to go. But um, you know he can hold his head up very high, having represented his club, his family, himself. You know at the highest level. So um, you have to wish him the best of luck in that. Absolutely. So, and uh, yeah, there, as Sean mentioned there, there is an exclusive interview in this week's paper with John O'Rourke about his retirement. And look at the other three players there, Killian O'Hanlon retiring as well, Damien Gore from the Kill Maccabees taking a year out. The one that strikes uh, me in terms of a uh, newsworthy this week is Stephen Sherlock stepping away from the panel from St. Finbar's. Top scorer in the Cork Championship this year, um, the joint top scorer from play as well, has been one of the main forwards alongside Brian Hurley for many years in a Cork shirt as well. The top scorer for Cork in two out of the last three seasons. 
is that a huge loss, Sean? Like Stephen Sherlock, one of the forwards that many counties would look towards in trying to quell in terms of trying to beat Cork. Like, is he a loss, Stephen Sherlock? A oh, huge, huge loss, Matt. Um, especially with the the new rules being implemented, if you were to pick um, players in the Cork County who you'd want fellas shooting outside, if there was a two point arc, you know, Stephen Sherlock is up there. It's it's between himself and Brian Hurley, you know. There's no doubt about that. And then you even have the um, the added influence then of the the three man inside uh, forward line, you know, uh, Sherlock if he was given you know that kind of space. And not having to worry about, you know, tracking cornerbacks who want to run him up the other side of the field. He'd be huge loss to Cork in, in that facet. So um, I'd imagine that probably came as a bit of a shock to, to John Cleary and the lads, you know. Uh, and as you mentioned, the fact that he had a very good 2024 campaign as well. So Sherlock would be a huge loss. And um, uh, as well in Killian O'Hanlon, you know, the um, poor fellow has been ravaged by injuries all through his, um, all through his career. And uh, like you know, uh, it's it's a tough one, but um, he probably saw the the brighter side of, of the tunnel there with Kilchanig and their recent success. So maybe he like John wants to concentrate in his club, and then the same with Damien. Damien's kind of along the same lines as John, you know, uh, giving an awful lot of effort into into training and and turning up whatever it is four or five nights a week, and then to not really get any game time. It's it's fairly disheartening, and uh, you know you saw it with Blake Murphy as well. Um, you know, last year dropping off the panel because of lack of game time. It's you know, it's it's tough in that aspect that you know this you you want to succeed um in the league especially and you know you Cork would want to be putting out their their best um fifteen week in week out there and usually that would be a, a chance for maybe the the squad players to get a run but um if they're not getting a run the league and you know they can look at championship then and. Yeah, the odds are diminished even further. So, um, it, it's a it's a case of game time with a lot of them. But Sherlock is definitely a shot, and it will hamper Cork's chances uh, for next year. So, John uh, Cleary will definitely have to dig deep in the county to try and find a replacement for him because, uh, you know, uh, if you had himself and Brian Hurley inside as part of that tree with Chris O, would be uh, very dangerous. But now they're going to have to um to look elsewhere, Matt. It's going to be difficult to more or less for Cork considering like if Castlehaven um, let's let's prove for um, a, a good way from a Castlehaven point of view if they go on an all Ireland run uh, the all Ireland final is scheduled for sometime in January the league starts at the end of January if Brian Hurley's not available for the end of January you don't have Stephen Sherlock there who is going to take the mantle for Cork I know there's Chris O there but for Freeze in particular who's going to take the mantle do you think Sean? Mm-hmm. No, it's a it's a very interesting one. You know, if you're just looking at the four lads that dropped off there recently, all forwards, you know, all serious options that you know John might have been saying to himself, you know, if if um if some fellow isn't performing, these lads are well a- well able and well capable, have enough experience in the camp to come in there. But um you you look as well at Connor Corbett probably would have been another option, but with his injury, you know, that's uh, another issue. You know, there there's going to have to be serious work in terms of looking um who to bring in. You know, to the to the team, the panel now. I suppose Mark Cronin is probably one of the the fellas that pops pops up to mind straight away with his experience. Um, but as you said, if Castlehaven go on a deep run, um, without Brian Hurley there, especially that that could be a huge huge um hamper to to Cork in the Division Two campaign because we know for a fact they are really targeting getting up to division one this year. You see the teams that are in the uh, division with them. They're more than capable of, of qualifying. Um, just saw even last year, you know, our man, Donegal getting to the division two final and, and Cork uh, pushed them all the way in the times they met him uh, during Donegal in the championship. And then Arma obviously in the last game, the league. So they have the ability there, but it's just a case of consistency. And now, if you if you're down a few of those, um, you know, big name players like a, like a Sherlock, um, you know, it's going to be harder to find the scores. And we know uh, how much of an issue finding scores uh, was in recent times. So um, it, it's going to be an interesting winter. But they're they're going to have to bring in um, a few fresh faces now and see how they operate and use friendlies. I don't know if the McGrath Cup's coming back now or not, but um, yeah, use as many friendlies as possible to find those sharp shooters because they're going to need them come the national league. Probably unfortunate that the the one year the Cork footballers are in, in kind of a mini transition. The McGrath Cup is gone as it stands. So um, so that should be interesting to see how John Cleary 
incorporates the new players um, before the league campaign next January. Um, moving on to the, uh, this weekend, Castlehaven are in action against Dr. Crokes in the AIB Munster Senior Football Championship quarter final. That's on a 115 on Sunday. It's in the Dr. Crokes GA Club and it's also live on Clubber if anybody can't go to the game as well. Tough game for Castlehaven. They would be considered would they be considered favourite, Sean? Like Dr. Crokes are looking I had a, a brief look at the odds that Dr. Crokes are slight favourites for this game, probably because of home advantage. But Seeing as Castlehaven won the Munster Championship last season, would you consider them favourites or not? Yeah, home advantage is huge there because I'd imagine, Matt, if you uh, reverse the roles and the game was uh, down on West Cork, you'd probably um, fancy Castlehaven, you know, in terms of, I'd imagine the bookies probably would have uh, as well. But um, they won the Munster last year and arguably um, they've gotten a lot better now this year. You know, and uh, if they can clear up the small few niggles and injuries they've had during the year and have a full squad to play from, there's no reason they can overturn Crokes. Um, they played them a couple of uh, times there in the mid uh, teens, but that Crokes team, as you know yourself, was phenomenal. You know, um, they they were as close to uh, an inter county team as you get in the club scene um, uh, in that era. So, Castlehaven will be looking at it, and you know. The fact that the bookies have put their croaks as uh, favourites will will suit them down to the ground, but I'd expect a very close game. Um, it it would have been interesting if it was in West Cork. Um, you'd have fancied Castlehaven a lot. The home advantage is, is a big um, is a big decider, but I'd imagine a very close game um, for that match. And um, whoever goes on to win that should uh, end up winning the Munster title. You'd imagine. The winners of that game will play Rack Armagh in the semi final, and then the final will be either against Adair, Aero Guinness, or Lockmar Castellani. So you'd imagine they'd be the favourites, um, being Dr. Crokes or Castlehaven. The main kind of aspect for this one is who picks up Tony Brosnan from a Castlehaven point of view, because Tony Brosnan was kept quiet in the Kerry final by Tom O'Sullivan. He didn't score anything in the Kerry final, despite scoring 3 23 on the run to the final before that. So like, is it crucial who Castlehaven put on uh, the main Dr. Crokes marksman to see if they go on and win the game? Yeah, obviously, in, in, in those big uh, Munster, Munster games, Matt, you've got to be looking at um, the, the inter-county stars there and, and Brosnan as good as you get um, in Crokes' lineup. But uh, Castlehaven have, have lads who've, who've faced, you know, big names around Cork year in, year out, and they've done jobs on them as well. So you have you have options there. Um you know, you have uh, Rory Maguire, you have Damien Collan, you have Ron Walsh if he's fit enough as well. So they have options in terms of um, who will be able to keep the pace with them. And uh, to just the nature of the way Castlehaven play as well. They'll be able to, to block up the, the runners coming through as well. So if they get a hold on the inside forwards, you'd give them a, a great opportunity, especially with their counter-attack as well, uh, moving out from defence. So, um, yeah, that'll be definitely a, an interesting matchup. And uh, on the other side, then, are they going to be uh, looking uh, at Brian Hurley and who um, they reckon they'll put um, on the Castle Havens marksman? But as, as you saw in the uh, county final, it's not just Brian. Um, there's plenty of others there in Castle Haven that can do the job and do the scoring. So, yeah, some interesting matchups, but it uh, should be a great game. Should be definitely, and uh, Gavin White in the defence for Dr. Crokes will be interesting to see if he attacks or defends as well, but it should be a very interesting game live on Clover, and it's in the Dr. Crokes GA Club this Sunday. Another two West Cork clubs involved in Munster action this weekend is um, in the LGFA scene. O'Donovan Rossa are up against St. Albas from Limerick in uh, the intermediate LGFA Munster final on Sunday at 1pm in Mallow. O'Donovan Rossa beat Scarta Glen in Skibbereen last Saturday by a, a scoreline well, they won that game by a point uh, last Saturday with Fanuno Driscoll scoring 1-3, Avo Donovan with 1-2, Kato Donovan with 1-2, one, two, one, two, and Laura Manny, their captain, with 1-1 one, one as well. An excellent performance from Skibbereen. And I was in Skibbereen you know, on Saturday. I wasn't at the game, though, but I was in around the area. And the red and white flags around the place and the the, the bounce in the community in the, on that day on Saturday was absolutely incredible. And I'm sure the Skibbereen fans will go on in their droves to Mallow on Sunday 
Uh, in Mallow as well this weekend as well is Clonic Hilty against Bally McCarbury in the Senior B Munster Vinyl on Saturday at 1pm. There's four Munster Vinyls this weekend in Mallow and two of them are involving West Cork clubs. Clonic Hilty are up against Bally McCarbury. A side that reached the Senior A All-Ireland Final last year um, against Kilcar and Clonburn beating Clan Aaron, I think, um, in the semi-final last year. En route to the final, Kilcar and Clonburn from Galway beat them quite handsomely, but Kilcar and Clonburn could do that to anybody. Bally McCarbury lost the chance to go 43 in a row in Water to Comoral Rangers this year, so they are a very good side, and Clonic Hilty will have their hands full, no doubts about that. But um, your own thoughts, Sean, about them two LGFA teams, especially Skib, like it's a major opportunity to win their fifth trophy out of possible five. They've won two car titles now in junior and intermediate. They won the junior All-Ireland, they won the junior Munster title. There's a chance to win the intermediate title on top of that too. There is indeed, like when you look at both of them, it, it's clan have uh, a bit of uh, uncharted territory going into the, the Munster this year, but especially with Skib, um, they've been on a serious bounce from uh, early spring 2023 and they pretty much haven't stopped. I know they had that slight blip against Valley Rovers during the championship this year, then they turned them over when they meet, uh, met him again later in the year comprehensively. But Skib have been just going from strength to strength. And to beat uh, a Kerry team in the Munster Championship is no easy feat. And they just got over the line. I'd imagine home advantage there, even the, the girls were referring to it afterwards, was, was a huge factor. But they just seemed to to find ways to win even the all Ireland final last year, you know, being down late and then finding a late goal through Ava. Just crazy the way they managed to, uh, to pull games out of the fire and the same against Neva Bond. The fact that they were um, you know, down late on, didn't panic and managed to get over the line, very close uh, affairs. That stands to a team and it should stand to a Donovan Rossa going uh, going um, further in this competition. And who knows, even getting past the Munster, they could be pushing on again for another All-Ireland. And that would be you know, undoubtedly one of the best achievements in, in Cork ladies football in the club scene ever, you know. So it's it's fantastic for Skibbereen, it's fantastic for the area, fantastic for the girls. And even just losing, they've lost players through injury, they've lost players who, who've returned to, to home clubs, but they keep going, they keep finding ways to win. And um, it'll be very interesting to see how far their journey takes them again this year. Definitely so. And the, the All Ireland series, uh, just as a matter of interest, they play if they win against St. Albans this weekend in the Munster Championship, they'll play either Anna Down from Galway. Liverpool or Edinburgh in the semi-finals. So um, quite interesting opponents there from a uh, Skibbereen point of view. Of course, St. Albans beat uh, Kappa White quite comprehensively last weekend in the semi-final. So they'll be a tough opponent nonetheless. And Skib beat Skartigan, obviously, by 4-9 to 3-11 last Saturday and should be um, in brilliant mood going into this Munster final at the weekend. Kilmacabee recently won the Carberry Junior A Football Championship and they're now in county action against Douglas' second team on Sunday at 3pm in Clonic Hilty. Obviously, Damien Gore will be to the fore in that game. Ian Jennings as well, some excellent players in the Kilmacabee side. You would have to imagine, Sean, against a Douglas second team, a Do considering the Douglas first team struggled in periods of the Premier Senior Championship and considering they're playing outside their comfort zone, many would argue, outside the city, you would imagine Kilmacabee would be favourites for this one. You'd have to think that, Matt, yeah, especially being so close to home as well and uh, righty off the high of, of um, reclaiming the Carberry title. And you just mentioned like a couple of fellas there and you have to add like the, the likes of Martin Collins around the middle of the pitch there as well. And Donica McCarthy at 40 years of age to be still producing. Like he won man in the match in the West Kirk final. Like uh, it'd be interesting to do a stat as he the oldest man to win that award, you know. So it's fantastic. You've Rory Hower in there as well who's making the trip from Galway. So... They're, they're a very close-knit bunch and it was very interesting to hear that uh, the consensus after the, the Carberry final is that a lot of them in that squad have four medals and they probably feel that this is now their time to push on. Uh, I don't think people in Lep need reminding of the game against Trump Tariff uh, that was there for the taking and it was snatched from their, uh, the, you know, from their grabs late on. So they will be looking to push on big time in the county, but um, it would be a case of if they get past Douglas, you've got to have a look at Inascara. Inascara are probably the big threat to them there. So they'll obviously be keeping um, you know, both eyes on their clash against Douglas this week, but they definitely would have had fellas having a look at Inascara as well and seeing how good they are because 
if you were to look at the junior A championship and who their biggest competitors, it's probably the lads from mid-Cork, but they have to obviously get over Douglas this weekend. Definitely so, and that game is on in Clonic at 3pm this Sunday. Uh, we'll take a quick break now, and after the break, we'll discuss what went on in the Carberry Junior A Hurling Championship final. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. So welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast. And in a bit, we will listen to Jordan Mahoon as Captain Jeremiah Hurley after their win over Banlascarty last Sunday. They beat Ball on a scoreline of 114 to 112 after a replay. This was nip and tuck throughout, uh, Sean. 112 apiece going into the last few minutes. And Mahoon has scored two late on points to win this game in the end after a replay. It was a magnificent spectacle in in the skein on uh, Sunday. Brilliant win for Mahunas. And to be honest, it is the least they deserve. They've um, they've been unbeaten in 12 games across the league and championship in Hurling. They've only drawn one against Bandascarte in the drawn game. They won the other 11. They, and added to that as well, their football exploits against it all the way to the final and that against Kilmacabee. It's the least of what they deserve. And uh, Mahunas will be celebrating, I'm sure, for a long time this week. But they have a county quarterfinal this weekend against Ballinor. So maybe the celebration might be cut short just a tiny bit. Yeah, I'd imagine the, the hurlies were picked up back again uh, Tuesday night. So, But it was fully deserving, Matt, as you said. You know, they've had a fantastic year and probably the one worry going into the final was, you know, they got to both, you know, f- football and hurling finals. And if you come way empty-handed from both, um, you know, it, it would have been a real kick in the teeth. But in fairness to them, they knuckled back down. You know, the, one of the big worries might have been, you know, fatigue after uh, playing uh, in the football final, but they showed no signs of it. And when the game is in the melting pot there, they 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 snatched a victory. And the game, I think, was leveled uh, 10 times in all. You know, and it could have been a case of another another shot of extra time. But in fairness to Mahunas, um, they got over the line first time now since 2010. And I'd imagine uh, there was a good crack in Castletown over the weekend. But uh, looking looking forward to the county, they'll be looking to give that a good rattle as well. But uh, as they probably well know, Ballinora, uh knocked out Clannacilty last year and they did it quite comprehensively and Ballinor have been playing the county league as well so they, they know all about um, good quality hurling and they won't be easy but uh, Mahunas can uh, go into it you know free knowing that they have the uh, trophy under their belts already they have their medal in their pocket but uh, they will be really gunning for the county now so be interesting to see how that goes Definitely so, and that Balnor game is on this Sunday at 2 p.m. in Ovens. It should be a very interesting watch, I'm sure. But for now, let's hear from Jeremiah Hurley after their Carberry victory. So today I'll be joined on the podcast today by Jer- Jeremiah Hurley, the captain of Dermot O'Mahoon, the victorious Dermot O'Mahoon side that beat Banascarty in the Carberry Junior A Hurling Championship final last Sunday. Suppose, first of all, uh, Jeremiah. What a win last Sunday by two points after a replay against Bandascarty does get any tighter than that. We're a few days after the final now. How are you keeping? Yeah, look, I suppose we, we definitely celebrated it all right. You know, it was a great victory. Um, you know, good group of lads there as well. Like, I think we really enjoyed the victory by two points. And, you know, I suppose the first day too, the conditions were so atrocious. You know, a draw was a fair result. And, you know, I suppose the game itself has showed the quality of both sides to tit for tattle till the very end. And, you know, it was a it was a pure final moment to, to win by those two points is right. It was um, definitely brilliant. It's not out of order. And what does it mean to the whole Castletown kind of community? Because like, to win a first Carberry Junior A Hurling Championship in uh, 14 years, it's a magnificent achievement. It is, yeah. Look, it means a lot. Look, we're a small club. Um, do you know, we don't have a large pick. Like, so every player's value is, is you know... A million euro, like you know, so for everyone to, to work together and, and to pull off a result like that, and um, to see the support, I suppose, our own supporters, you know, to see them there on the pitch there today, then you know, there was a large crowd on there today, and, and to see the joy in their faces, uh, makes it all worthwhile, as right, chat is a nice feeling. Was that kind of an aspect that got you over the line? The support, the tremendous support that you have, um, it opened down um, the division, obviously, with uh, the final as well, like the big support turned out for Mahunas. Did that kind of drive you over the line on Sunday, do you think? It did, yeah. And um, look, I suppose we, we lost the final of the, of the football the weekend before too. Like, And um, we're kind of saying to each other, you know, some teams would have to wait a whole year with, with that pain to, to, you know, to, I suppose, redeem yourself again. I suppose we only had to wait a week. Um, and that really drove us on, I suppose, for, for the hurling final. And 
and to see the support, I suppose, at both finals and even at the hurling blowing and skiing there last day, you know, it, it does mean a lot, you know, I suppose. But um, no, it's, it's, it's nice to do it for, for both the players and I suppose the, the community as well. What was the feeling after the first game, the drawn game? Did you feel like it was a missed opportunity initially or were you relishing going to the replay? Yeah, look, I suppose some would say, look, it was a missed opportunity, I suppose, by us, I suppose, we'd be kind of, maybe we missed chances like that. But at the same time, too, I, I, I wouldn't think too too much. Like, you know, um, like we were always behind in that game. Um, you know, we had a couple of injuries, too, that, that you know, upset the, the balance of the team as well. Like, um, you know, I suppose Cotton Mango was away at work. I suppose I went off injured and that can upset the balance of the team a small bit. Like, so for the lads to put in the, the effort they did to get the draw, do you know, I think the draw was a fair result in that way. And, um, do you know, we knew then, like, we could get a couple of things right then for the replay. I think we're all looking forward to playing the replay because, look, we, we knew that we could tidy up in a few more things and, and get it right the next day. I suppose a crucial moment in the, that replay was the Kevin O'Donovan goal to make it 1 4 each. Um, it, it was done way in the first half and it, it definitely drove Drew Banascarty back in, in a way. So, how crucial was that goal just to drive you on and win the final? Yeah, look, it was a brilliant goal by Kevin. Like he's an outstanding player. Like, um, and like the I suppose goals are big moments in games like that. Like, and I suppose look, we did concede an, an early goal, in, you know, in the final. Like, and um, to get that goal before half time really kind of reassured us. You know that we we can drive it on here, and, and then push on and, and get the win. Like, you know, they they are big moments. And you know, it's it's great. To, you know, it's great to have players like Kevin Donovan. I suppose on the pitch, the same with on as well. And. And Gary Owen and Jamie Lucy, you know, they're all, you know, big threats up up, up front, like, and, um, you know, it's, 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 great to, it's great to have them and great to get the, the result. And I suppose in the group phase, um, to beat Clonakilty, the holders from last year by 16 points, not just beat them, hammer them out the gate, really. Did that, that kind of give you a confidence that you could go on and uh, win this Carberry uh, Junior A title? Yeah, definitely it did. Like, you know, I suppose even last year, too, I suppose we lost the, the quarterfinals to St. James on penalties. and. You know, we felt like, you know, we missed opportunities that day too. So at the start of the year, I suppose we definitely believed we had the potential to go forward on the competition. I suppose the probability of it too, we weren't too sure, I suppose, but we definitely we had the potential. Like, and, um, you know, that first game against Clan was a game we were all looking forward to big time because, you know, Clan had given us, you know, beatings, I suppose, down through the years as well. Like, so, you know, to, to be able to get one over on them, it was a great start of the campaign. And I suppose it really did drive belief winning the camp then that, you know, we're more than good enough to, to push on here this year. And I suppose uh, then the group stages, you got through that, the quarter finally beat Mary's, the semi finally beat Newstown as well, two tough sides in the knockout stages as well. That surely gave you more, more, more confidence as the weeks went on. It did, you know, the same Mary's game was, was a very tough game, you know, it was, you know, it was a real battle, I suppose. Um, and, you know, I suppose with the close connection with us and Mary's, I suppose, as well, you know, it was always going to be one of those games. Um, and to play Newstone as well, like, you know, we, we ended up playing all our neighbours, I suppose, you know, within the parish, you know, even Plunkett's as well in the group stages, like, so, you know, all those games weren't easy games, they were tough games, like, and, and to get over them, you know, it, it, it does boost the sun, like, there's, there's no doubt about that. And added to that as well, uh, with the tough games and the hurling, then you had the football, you went all the way into the final and that. How tough it is, is it to balance football and hurling in such a small rural community like Mahuna's? Like, it, it, on the outside, it looks very, very difficult. Admirable from a Carby point of view, we love dual clubs, obviously. But how difficult is it as a small club to to produce two excellent sides in the Carby Championships? Yeah, look, I suppose we're we've a we've a good panel of lads there, you know, we've bought you and experience, like so it was a great and look, I suppose we do only have the one team, like we we've no second teams or anything like that. So I suppose we, we are a good group good group of lads, I suppose we get on quite well, like, but um, you know, I suppose all those games they definitely take our toll. Like I suppose I suppose in, in definitely in the hurling, I suppose we did realize we potential in the hurling and look, we enjoyed the football as well, like we great potential in the football too, like and you know, I, I suppose as the weeks went in, you know, I don't know, I don't know what it is now on top of my head, like, but was it eight or nine weeks back to back game every weekend? Like, and, you know, as, as we, you know, we don't have that many players to pick from. So, you know, one or two lads had to come over, you know, injuries in a short period of time. Like, and, um, you know, so, you know, I think in that football team, you know, there was never the same starting 15 through the campaign. You know, there was lads coming down with injuries and, you know, they're back for the next game. And, you know, I show great depth within the panel too for, for what we had, you know, even the young miners that came into the, the panel this year as well, like, you know, they all stood up and, um, you know, I suppose you don't get anywhere without a good, a good team and, and I suppose we're all focused and, and I suppose we really enjoyed the football as well, like, and, you know, we, we felt like we had the right to be there. Um, 
there's no doubt about that. Like, you know. You mentioned the younger players coming in uh, to the panel. How important were they throughout the whole season, considering the injuries, considering the the, the long periods with football and hurling and back to back to back weeks? So, like the young players coming in this year in particular was a massive uh, coup for you, I'd imagine. It was, yeah. Look, I suppose you know some years there you mightn't get any, you know, minor coming through some years like another year. Then you might get one or two. Um, you know, we got a good few this year. You know, I suppose James Slimming there, Quill on Donovan, you know, I mean, also and like you know. Patrick Collins, you know, there's a, there's a few young guys there within the panel like that they came through and I suppose, you know, no one has, you know, a right to position now anymore, you know, everyone is pushing on, you know, it, it's quite hard there for selectors, I suppose, you know, and, and you know, that competition in the panel, I suppose, definitely drives it on for the year, you know, there's, 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 there's no sitting back like. And I suppose the consistency all year was absolutely brilliant for me. Like you played, um, I think it was 12 games this year across league and championship. You won 11 of them and drew, drew one, obviously, the drawn game against Bandascarty. Like that consistency level, what does that come down to? Does it come to hard work or is it as simple as that? What does it come down to? Um, definitely hard work. Um, I think anyone watches throughout the year definitely saw that, you know, we, we didn't lack, I suppose, that that fight or desire to win the ball. Like, um you know, even the dying moments of the game, like, and, um, you know, I suppose we, you know, we, we, I suppose we kind of focus on the basics and training too and hurling with different Corn. He's a coach. He came in there, like, and, um, you know, we got the basics right from the start, like, you know, and, um, after that, then it was just work rate, like, but I suppose we, we do, we've, we've great talents within the team too, like, you know, um, there's, there's definitely great players there, like, you know, and, um, just like that, yeah, I think there's, there's just work rate, work rate, work rate. I think that was the, the driving message before every game and you know at least if you did all you could in terms of the work rate thing and, and you left yourself out in the field you know that way then you know you've no regrets and I think that's kind of the attitude we took into every game um on the back of I suppose good players and end scale as well yeah, the, the attack that you, you employed this year the likes of Kaylon, uh, Kevin obviously Gerald O'Donovan they were absolutely outstanding in attack but defensively I think you only could see the five goals across the league in championship which was an incredible record so what does that kind of defensive structure um, come down to in a way to go on and win the championship? Um, yeah definitely I suppose you know each game we, we definitely got our matchups right each game as well like you know um, look we, we, we do have great ferocious defenders you know Eddie Mang and there, Sean Crowley, you know, the rest, you know, and um, as well as um, the, the rest of the last there, as I like, you know, our, our wing backs, you know, Jack O'Callan and Robbie Lucy, as I like, you know, um, and Ronald McCarthy, like, we were all just fighting every game, like, and it, it definitely, I suppose, we always kind of had the running joke, too, I suppose, before every game, they say to each other, you know, shops closed, like, you know, no one's coming in, and um, I suppose, you know, we kind of kept that attitude throughout the year. Um, the shop was closed and, and no one was loaded in. Like so, um, we did our best in that in that regard. Then, I suppose the management team definitely. You mentioned Dermot Coleman there. You had uh, Pat Lucy, you had John Nine, you had Toy Nine there. Like the management team, I'm sure would have dro drove you on to victory in this um in this championship too. They definitely did, yeah, and you know, and like um Pat and John Nine there, like you know, and, and, and Toy there as well, like you know, they passed on a wise words throughout the year, like and you know, to just. You know, small things, I suppose, that might go unnoticed, like, but, you know, they didn't go unnoticed by us, you know, they, they really kept everything quite organised and, you know, tactically, I suppose, we, we were kind of set up right, um, especially in, in this final here, you know, like, um, they definitely got their, you know, the tactics right there and the matchups and, you know, we all understood the assignment, like, you know, um, and look, you would like that, you know, we're very appreciative that they have a good, I suppose, team around us this year, but, you know, select as a manager and, uh, and everyone that's around us. Just for yourself, Jay, Jeremiah, what does it mean to captain this group of players to um, to the first uh, Carberry Hurling Championship for your club in 14 years? Like, I can imagine it's such an honour to do so. It is, though. It, it definitely was. You know, I said, if you started the year, it was, it was definitely a great honour, I suppose. You know, there's, there's great pride in, in, in captaining your your team out, out to victory like that. But I think we're a team, you know, there's a lot more leaders. You know, there's, there's 15 leaders on the team, really. Like, you know, so it's quite an easy job to, to, to run in charge of the rest of them, like, you know, because everyone... Everyone's a leader, like so. You know, it's, it's a great honor, no doubt about it. And, and you know, it's it's always, I suppose, a moment you'll, you'll cherish, I suppose, lifting the the, the flyer nine. The flyer nine's complete now, but um, the next game obviously is the county quarterfinal against Ballinora. You excited to go into the county series? Like Ballinora, um, it, it provided a huge test to Clonakinty, obviously last season and beat them quite handsomely. But are you looking forward to um, the next game against Ballinora? We do, yeah. We're we're definitely looking forward to. It. There's no doubt about that. Like um. I think we were the runners up last year in the county final as well. Like you know, um, 
So like, there's no doubt about it. You know, they're they're, they're going to be a serious opposition. Like, and I suppose playing a, a team from outside the division, you you don't know too much about them. Like, but um, I definitely think you know this group of players, we, we definitely have the potential. I suppose to to push on. Like, and and I suppose hopefully you know the work rate will, will still be there. There's no doubt about that. Like, and um, look, we'll take every game as it comes. But you know, we we like to represent the Garber division quite well too within within the county series. Do you think the momentum of the Carberry win will take you on to potential county glory? Look, I suppose we'll take game by game. You know, you won't get carried away at all. Like, um, take one game as it comes. Um, but like that, I suppose you know, there's a good, there's a good team there, and I suppose before every game, we we feel like we have the right to be there and, and the right to push on. There's no reason why we can't win the game. Um, so look, we'll take game by game and opposition, by opposition by opposition, and I suppose we will see where we go. Exactly. So, and uh, congratulations on your win in the Carberry Championship as well, uh, Jeremiah. Thanks for coming on to the podcast today. Much appreciated. No, thank you. Thank you. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. So it is that time of the week again where we look at what's in this week's sports section for the Southern Star and the big story obviously is the retirees for Cork and John O'Rourke and Kenny O'Hanlon. There was an exclusive interview this week with the Carberry Rangers man John O'Rourke on his career overall and his retirement as well. So definitely worth a read this week. John Hayes' column focuses, focuses about John O'Rourke's um, retirement from the Cork panel as well as Stephen Sherlock um, taking the year out as well. There's LGFA previews for the Munster Finals this weekend, including Clonakilty against Bally McCarbury on the Saturday and O'Donovan Rossa against St Albas on the Sunday. Definitely worth a read there as well. There's also a report on O'Donovan Rossa's win over Scarta Glen last weekend and Clonakilty's win about Kilmihill will be mentioned in the paper as well. There's a preview to Castle Haven's game against Dr. Crokes in the Munster Senior Football Championship quarter final. An interview with Shawnee Callan is in this week's Southern Star. A two page spread is also there about Dermot Mahuna's victory in the Carberry Junior A Hurling Championship final against Banda Scarty, where the final was won and lost. A full report and full reaction on the game this week. There's also the West Cork, um, the West Cork League, where Clan Kilty played Drina Rangers in a top of table clash in soccer, where it ended incredibly a four all draw. Definitely worth to read that report this week in the Star as well. There's also rugby, motorsport, and loads of other sports in this week's um, sports edition as well. So definitely worth um, going down to the shops in West Cork to collect yourself a copy. But as usual, if you are further afield or can't make to the shops, you could subscribe to the Southern Star e-paper and get the Southern Star on your laptop, tablet or phone. Just go to www.southernstar.ie forward slash subscribe. Enter your details and you'll get an exact replica of the newspaper for less than two euro per week. As always, thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast and thanks again to our sponsors at Access Credit Union. If you've enjoyed this, please remember to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts and we'll be back again next week. Until then, take care.